Superstar Limo is an attraction and the opening of Disney's California Adventure that is now occupied by Monsters Incorporated. So this opening day attraction um, was in the same location as Monsters Incorporated. In fact, uses some of the same ride vehicles and as you can see, some of the uh, the facade as well, uh, but was themed to being a limo being uh, maneuvered through Los Angeles and Beverly Hills where all the rich people were etc and it had a snarky kind of uh, um, sensibility and sense of humor. Now the ride was toned down from the original idea which was to make it more of a chase sequence uh, because the death of Princess Diana happened during the creation of this park and, and the planning of this park so they toned it down to be more of a sedate tour uh, and the ride never became kind of the thrill ride that it was meant to be and it took more and more of the the pun and um, humor element instead of trying to be something more thrilling. The ride closed in uh, 2002, January 11, 2002, just over a year after the park opened. It was the first casualty of Disney's California Adventure. Now as you can see a little bit here and in the following slides, the facade was really just a facade and there wasn't much to it uh, once you got into the queue area itself. Here are the baggage claim type um, signs to imply that you are arriving somewhere like at the airport and there were several signs just behind it behind that main facade there uh, that uh, all make use of puns as is common throughout this park in 2001. A look at the outside part of the queue here and we're gonna jump into that spot of the queue ourselves and you see more of the airplanes in the background uh, looking back towards the main uh, part of the queue. The airplanes again were to imply that we have just landed at the airport and we are now arriving and look at how optimistic this queue was uh, at LAX. And so you see the baggage claim with some of their inside jokes about you know what might be here, like pet carriers and so forth, uh, jumbled and busy on that first few days. Uh, some of the signs about Superstar Limo while you're in Superstar Limo, that's the limo service that picks you up from the airport. And again, some more signs as you maneuver through the first couple of hallways towards ground transportation from the airport. And we come across a uh, monitor which shows us Joan Rivers in a fairly disturbing kind of puppet um, as though she's fake interviewing people. And so um, this, this played over and over again and right below it was a telephone that was out of order. Uh, then we have some more displays about award shows or other companies that we might care about in the nearby area. And then this display almost toward the very end of the queue. And take note of this guy holding up a cell phone because if you're on the other side of this display, it kind of looks like he's flipping you off. Then we make it into the loading area directly. And as you can see, there's the purple limos and there's the costume of the cast members. There's the limos lined up and ready for us to get into one. And when you get into one, they dispatch you from this console here. Here's a view from the loading dock looking back at other cars. And once you're in, you see that all the freeways are jammed. So we're not going to take the freeway. We're going to go this way into the tunnels. And when we're in the tunnels, up to the side of us, on the left, there's a speaker and the screen lights up with Swifty LaRue. He's our agent. So we are Hollywood stars. And now we're going to take a tour through Beverly Hills, or Beverly Hills, that is, where they've got things like money and these decorations and Regis Philbin and Antonio Banderas and Melanie Griffith and, you know, law sort of decorations. Everything is done in a way to make it look like this is. Uh, making fun of what's typical in Los Angeles. Cindy Crawford over into the next room where we have the Hollywood Bowl. There's Swifty LaRue, a portrait in the ceiling, and Tim Allen. We really just kind of go by these celebrities. They don't, don't move much and they certainly don't talk, but they are referenced by the narrator and Jackie Chan. There's Jeannie from Aladdin in the next room, and uh, how about a map to your house, Drew Carey, who's selling maps to the stars' houses, apparently. We are being pursued by the paparazzi, who pop in and out from behind all of these decorations from time to time. And we go into a pool party. There was a couple of dark rooms in there where you transition between the main rooms. The next room in is Muscle Beach, where, as you see, let's do abs. Something looks a little suspicious down here at the bottom, but don't worry. It's just, well, actually, maybe we should worry a little bit. And this room is the seance, and uh, as you see in the close-up here, this seance woman in the or, or in the crystal skull is an homage to the Haunted Mansion, and she's saying some of the lines from the Haunted Mansion seance at the time. 
Then we go to another room where a photo was taken of us. We'll see that photo a little bit later. And we finally have arrived at Superstar Studios where there are still more people asking us to read their screenplay or sign things. And so we see some of the magic of filmmaking and some of the behind the scenes of what it takes to make a film. And then adoring crowds and fans because we are here at um, our premiere. And Whoopi Goldberg informs us that we've arrived. So we go to Popcorn and everyone is looking this is a giant hollywood sign on the side they're looking at us now it's the story of you this is that picture that was taken of us earlier and people often had kind of glazed expressions here once they got to this point in the ride because the ride isn't really all that much that's the end of the ride some electronic um views of you as a you again on that last little bit here's sort of the exit corridor a couple views of this of little toys and arriving limos that's going to be some things that we pass on our way in there's the back wall of the unload the front wall of the front area of the unload and then out the main door to the disneyland resort which as it says welcomes new stars one last look back into the building on our way out. Now around the corner in 2001, you could have bought merchandise with Superstar Limo's name on it. There's a couple different varieties. There are these stars and these um, photo albums. There's a closer view of one of the sort of um, padded stars with a mirror in the middle of it. And there's the one that was a photo album we saw just a moment ago. Superstar Limo hats, Superstar Limo shirts, and Superstar Limo stickers. Now, this is something from my own personal collection here, um, a die-cast model of Superstar Limo they had sold at the time. And this is another one. This is a radio-controlled, much larger one. cost $25 back in the day. And this, then, is the prize of the collection, which is um, a still-sealed poster size, or I guess half poster size, Superstar Limo poster. So they really went all out in creating merchandise for Superstar Limo, although it didn't last more than a year. And it was kind of the phantom boats for Disney California Adventure. It's the ride that um, people knew about at the very beginning, and it tested horribly, so they took it out, and now it's achieved some legendary status.